<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Show Me the Meaning, Wise Cracks Movie Podcast. Show me the meaning. My name is Jared, and joined here by the Show Me the Meaning crew, we got Jacob. Hello, hello. And Greg. What's up, what's up? And joining us again is Alec. What's up, Alec? Yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today yeah. we're talking about the 1999 film Office Space, written and directed by Mike Judge, starring Ron Livingston and Jennifer Aniston. As always, we're going to go around and talk about the first time we saw this movie, as well as revisiting it for this podcast. But on top of that, I want to know... What would you do with a million dollars? Let's start. Two chicks at the same, same time. Two dudes <laughs> at the same time. Two chicks. All That's right. it. Let's, let's start with Greg. Greg, what was it like first time you saw uh, it? You know, guys, I got to tell you, man, um, I can't remember the first time I've seen this movie. Uh, it feels like this movie has been around ever since I, well, it has been around ever since I graduated from high school. Uh I recall, I remember seeing it in like early 2000, like early 2001. That's when I recall like seeing it a lot. And I remember a job I had that this movie was referenced all the time. And um, was I that dug it. Flingers? It. Were you no, <laughs> where was I working? I, I was working, I mean, the first time I saw this gig, this this movie, I was working at like a telemarketing gig. So we were in cubicles. <laughs> was there the MCI WorldCom gig? It was MCI WorldCom. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Wait, um, is your name? Cassius Green? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> you should hear my other voice. All right. uh, um, Hello. But yeah, the, that was the first time I remember that uh, the movie, and it had all these references to it. Uh, but watching it again, man, it's uh, it's wild how deep that movie is. You know, uh, that's what I was feeling when I was watching it over the weekend, and how many, um, how weird it is to like. Uh, I can see myself in that situation right now, and uh, and just the when he just stops giving a fuck, when he just mm-hmm. stops caring, uh, it's <laughs> it's crazy how he starts getting everything that he kind of wants at that point. Uh, but it's still a fantasy, and it's a great movie. And with a million dollars, oh man, that's not even a lot of money anymore, though. You know, know what I mean? <laughs> Sad. Uh, I buy a crib. Couple of cribs and you know just Joshua make, Tree man. Joshua oh, Tree. I, I mean, that, of course, that, that's nothing. Though. A container I'll do swimming Joshua pool. Tree, I do Joshua Tree. I do back home, and then I just travel a lot, and I probably do drugs again. <laughs> 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 that's it. Yeah, yeah. More, like what you were saying, watching it since high school. This is definitely the first time I've watched it since I've had a job. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. Like, so it definitely has a whole different meaning totally. when you're not watching it as a kid. Yeah, corporate accounts being able. Uh, corporate accounts people. Me to speaking. Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jacob. What about you? I, you know, Vito is the reason. Vito Reese. I had a, a, a childhood friend that saw it in theaters. He went to go see some other movie. I don't know what was happening in '99 or '98. Whatever movie was playing, but that was sold out. So he had to go see Office Space. This movie called Office Space. <laughs> and he said, "Dude, it was amazing." And we must have been mm-hmm. in middle school or high school, probably at that time. And he said, it's incredible. So he got it on tape, or I think it's tape at the time, had me come over to his house and watch it. It was kind of like one of those movies that went straight to tape. Because yeah. it didn't do well in theaters, I don't <laughs> think at, at all. all. And I sat down and I loved it. I just remember it being so funny. Like these characters, it was like the first time kind of like the Coen Brothers has these kind of cartoon-like characters. It felt a lot to me like a, car- like a comic I used to read, Dilbert. It had yeah. like a lot of this corporate environment being the joke and these mm-hmm. people and these characters. So I saw it first time at Vito's house. I guess in 2000 or something. And then I ended up living that life. I worked in corporate software for seven years of my life and my career. And, you know, we were trying to be the the anti-office space, but there's so much of that that just seeps into any job. So, like, the movie just became, like, this Bible for me for years and years and years. I've seen it probably really, like, 40 to 50 times, <laughs> honestly, a lot. Uh, and I did not watch it again for this podcast. I don't know if I really needed to, but... Uh, yeah, it's just a well, very I also, important I also told, piece in my life. I also life. grabbed you like 30 minutes ago, yeah. and I was like, hey, did you join the podcast? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, sure, I love it. And I got the Inatech Cup, and we got Mr. Uh, Mr. Lumberg back there. That's but, right. Yeah. Um, no, it was, you know, it's just a great movie. What would I do with a million dollars? I Two dudes at the same time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Always, I love that. It's like, I would do nothing. You don't need a million dollars to nothing, man. Take a look at my cousin. He's broke. Don't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my like wise to- words to live by. Yeah. <laughs> I also love I got to get my ass up at Las Colinas. Got to get my ass up at 6 a.m. every day this week. Mm-hmm. I'm putting up the drywall over the new McDonald's. <laughs> All right, Alec, what about you? Uh, I don't remember exactly the first time I saw this movie, but it came out around the time I was nine. And it's a movie, one of the few movies I owned on DVD, and I watched it all the time. And at some point, I made the conscious decision, for better or worse, to like 
become Peter at that time. So I like <laughs> stopped doing all my homework. I was like, you know wow. what? I could, I could just pass school with just doing well on tests. Like I don't need homework. And like, just like interpersonal problems, just did not give a shit. I'm not still like that. I went to college and was like, oh, I actually enjoy applying myself. Uh, but yeah, it had this very weird effect on me as a child. And it's also weird. The other people might know this is the other movie that had a weird uh, influence on me was Fight Club and they came out in the same year. Um, oh, wait, right. is this movie 97? So, 99. 99. Yeah, I mean, this is a oh, crazy Club, year. 99. Right, right, Magnolia, right. The Matrix, <laughs> Office Space, Man. American Beauty. I got to say, a crazy I year. mean, were times better then? <laughs> I mean, the music was yeah. certainly better. Well, maybe. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I'm just I, I, I got hit fart. by the nostalgia bug for sure. Yeah. Anyway, what was like but revisiting it, Alec? It was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was just as good, if not better. I think I understood context. <laughs> the last time I saw this was probably before I started working in different kinds of offices and stuff like that. So it gives me a whole new context, which is amazing. And as far as a million dollars, it's not a lot of money. I feel like... I could buy a nice two bedroom in a nice neighborhood in Brooklyn somewhere. <laughs> a million dollars is still a lot of money. I yeah, mean, it's, I mean, look, we're talking uh, about would, working would the, a shitty software job. Like, yeah, it's still a lot of money. Would the answer change drastically if I upped it to two million? I mean, it hasn't. Yeah, inflation really? hasn't gotten that. <laughs> what, 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 what's the number amount of money that would so make jaded. it a different answer? We we talked five about million. This it's ten, twelve million. It's ten million. Ten million. Oh, ten million. Ten million. Ten million. Great. Ten million. You never have to work a day in your life again. Ever. Oh, yeah. Because Ever. you could live off the interest. Yes. Where yeah. a million, you can live off the interest, but like you could live a middle class lifestyle off the interest. You would never be able to touch it. Ten million dollars, you could be making like six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, if you play your money right. What do you? What do you? What, what more do you need than that? A million, you can fuck that up in a week. You can, like, <laughs> oh, you can, yeah. you can, you can fuck up a million. I would be like, precious with it. Like, never. I wouldn't change a, a single iota except for, you know, who Two you sleep with. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, but you can make it that, last. What does that actually No, but mean? the freedom that you really want, I think, is, like you're saying, $10 million, $10 million. which I guess... I, I can't imagine it's gone 10x. I mean, it hasn't... Inflation hasn't gone that bad in 20 years. But anyway... $10 million, you never have to work a day again in your life. You get to fly first class anywhere. That's nice. I want to know, because you, you, like, I was listening to your, uh, Greg, I was listening to Blackstage, uh, okay. Greg's podcast he does with us, and you guys mentioned something about how when you see Silicon Valley billionaires, like these nerdy guys in like Ferraris and stuff, how it's weird. Yeah. And yeah, I think <laughs> about that a lot, how no matter how much money you make, no matter whatever, you're still you and you're still totally. you're still there. <laughs> yeah. And now I want to hear, like, when you say I have a million dollars, I'll do two dudes at once or have sex. What is? Yeah, but walk I, I'm me being th- incredibly walk, facetious. Yeah, but but not really. I, I mean, well, I don't but, think I don't think my like walk me would... through the steps of like, all right, I have a million dollars. <laughs> what are the steps to get to? I think you need really a... attractive men in your bed. I or think whatever. you need or whatever it is. I think you need to Crazy. have. Uh, Craigslist. <laughs> I think it, passport. I think in like the logical <laughs> steps here of two chicks at the same time, and let's just take uh, 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 Peter's example. It probably me or uh, Lawrence's example. It probably means like he's gonna get out of that shitty apartment. He's gonna get a nice pad, okay. and the pad will become the panty dropper, and that will be the reason why he has the confidence to be able to get two chicks at the same time, or he'll just feel confident. See, this is like the I, same. I, think it's I, the I go, stuff I go back to what Greg was talking about on his podcast, but like. Look at Aziz, man. He has all the money in the world. <gasps> Bad with women. And still I mean, horrible with women. Horrible he can, with he women. He can still take a girl yeah. back to uh, his pad, which I'm sure is super impressive, and you're right. still fuck it. You're right. Oh you're God. right. No, I mean, it's not like all of a sudden the money. <laughs> so bad. I'm sorry. Right. It's not like the money just like solves your ability to that's be true. suave. Yeah. That I know. doesn't. I mean, uh, that's the point I'm bringing. I, up. I just imagine that more people are willing to sleep with a weirdo when he's got a ton of money, sure. a ton of power. It can only help. I really. guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, I remember yeah, I had a friend. So this this movie also, so it's filmed in Austin. I think Mike Judge is also Texan, you know, from yeah. King of the Hill and stuff. And this is very much based on Dell. I'm pretty sure it's like Dell and the whole world of the startup technology culture. Mm-hmm. And like Dell, is, Michael Dell is an example. A guy I happened to meet. He spoke at UT. I got to meet the guy. Very socially awkward guy. And he's driving around in a Testarossa, you know, sports car, crazy billionaire dude. And he's taking each speed bump at like one mile per hour. And all the employees <laughs> are just like. It's still the same guy yeah. who like couldn't couldn't ask a girl on a date at JCC, you know. Like, it's the same people. Nothing yeah. has changed. They just have more money. They can buy more toys. But totally. that's it. But I don't. That doesn't go away. I mean, yeah. it, Jacob, if you had, let's say, let's turn it to ten million dollars or five million dollars, would you still drop a quarter? Would you still pick up a quarter you found on the ground? Absolutely. 
I absolutely would. I still pick up pennies off urinals. I mean, I'm like a, I'm like no. a cheap, cheap, cheap man. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah, not in it, not that. in it, but if it's on it, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, oh. I picked up a dime. That, I know, Alec, you're do freaking you to, out. How, how often do you go to Coinstar? <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of coins. I have like big, big I have bags coins, of coins, but they just, you know, I don't. No, Coinstar is. I mean, Coinstar is not bad. I mean, I love. 10%. Co- I love. Me too. It's fun. It. See, I lo- I, just, I just love watching people do it. <laughs> you're gonna see. You're gonna see everyone like in their Lamborghinis pulling up and then dumping out quarters and hoping that they. Get eight dollars around. around. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It Can't is wait for like that a fun. Fourteen bucks. Yeah, but yeah. You, you know you're gonna win. <laughs> it's porn. It's yeah. like I can just sit yeah, back you're and gonna win, popcorn. but you're literally giving away money. I know, but that yeah. might be a good YouTube channel. Like, just like it's just very cathartic. It's kind of like ASMR the for coins are money. It's, it's not a channel. <laughs> it's Jew ASMR. It's like somebody like squeezing a pimple or something. It's, right. just, it's nice to watch. Uh, all right. Huh. So first oh, time I saw yeah, this movie. You. I saw it in the theater with my mom, but I was like 11 years old or something like that. So I didn't. This was back in the time when, when I thought of comedy, I thought of Jim Carrey movies. Okay. So I didn't even. Mm. I, I didn't get it at all. I was like, wait a second. You're telling me that I'm supposed <laughs> to laugh at something that isn't a guy talking out of his ass? Like, how, <laughs> how am I supposed to know when to laugh? Here we're, we're uh, actually hearing Jared's childhood be ruined <laughs> as he starts to realize the reality of the world. And then that misery. So I, me and my mom did not get it, didn't like it. So I didn't see it for like 10 years later. I think I've only seen this movie three times. I saw it again in college. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm getting this now. Mm. This is hilarious. And then last night I watched it, and it's hilarious. It's incredibly it's, profound. Uh, it's incredibly so profound. And prophetic, too. And prophetic and super cathartic to watch for people who are frustrated with their job or just to even see Peter brush off all the stuff, brush Bullshit. off his boss, uh, pursue his dreams fearlessly is just so cathartic. It kind of has it's an so ending good. similar to like Goodwill Hunting in the sense that it's like – Fuck it all. I'm going to go into construction. Physical. I feel satisfied and happy and fulfilled in my life now. I'm outside. But, it, but I like that. Obviously, it's got the beat the system theme. You know, it's got that whole idea of fuck the system. Yeah. Fuck this oppression. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Uh, fuck up the copy yeah. maker, the, the, copy, <laughs> the, copy, the machine. copy machine. <laughs> yeah. My stapler. Yeah. Uh. Milton, is, Milton is just, uh, he's great. Timeless. It's, for excuse sure. me. I was. I told her that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume from 9 to 11. So, yes, I haven't set the building on fire. That's the, that's the last straw. All the happy voices, though. The I love how, like... Are you having a bad case of the Mondays? Oh, <laughs> just like, oh, it's like everybody's so happy and, like... Now, yeah. now, Milton, uh, don't be greedy. Pass oh, it along just, so everyone gets a piece. Uh, I, I, Do you have people so, like that at your job? Uh, I just know people like that in life, and like people that are just people like Brandon who got all the he's got the flair. fifty pieces of flair. <laughs> people that take their shitty jobs too seriously. Too seriously, oh, man. Like, uh, come on, man, they don't care about you. <laughs> I don't know how many yeah. times I've been in the back of like, they don't give a fuck about you, dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember when we did the Sorry to Bother You podcast, I never said my shittiest job. And my shittiest job was I used to work at Jimmy John's, the sandwich company. <laughs> oh, and man. my boss took his job way Ugh. too seriously. I got reprimanded once because when people would leave the sandwich shop, I would say, hey, thanks for coming. And he's like, don't say that. That's disgusting. What? Oh, no. can't say what did coming. he want you to say? He want, oh, yeah. coming just for saying coming? Because yeah. I said, thanks for coming. Oh, <laughs> thanks for coming on my thigh. And I was like, <laughs> I, and it took me, like, I was like you. I was like, what? What? <laughs> and then he said, uh, he said, like, thanks for being a good customer. Thanks for being a great, like, <laughs> a great yeah. fan. <laughs> Something like oh, that. Wow. Uh, Check that guy's van. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? Cool. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, yeah, imagine working on in a sandwich shop under a guy who takes his life that seriously. It was bad. But with a million dollars, um, I guess a, a house. Yeah, yeah, just somewhere to live, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, now, that would... I don't know if I'd get it in L.A. I don't know where I would get <sighs> no, it. No, see, yeah, in L.A. Could. is going to... It's like such a waste of money, It's a right? waste. You throw yeah. everything away. Why yeah. is that a you're waste? Water, well, it's just like, like you're, you're done with your million dollars with, like, one oh, transaction. Yeah, yeah. You're done with your million, and it's basically a and then condo. You your, and then you got to pay your it's taxes. It's a condo, whereas you could go into... You can get a mansion oh, somewhere. Oh, in Texas. Oh, yeah. man, Texas. Texas is getting expensive now, too. You got to go... I don't know. Montana, Idaho, or something. Middle America. You can buy your own. Just get your town. Land. Just get your <laughs> yeah, or Joshua land. Tree. Oh yeah, Joshua Tree. Oh, I was yeah. just there, and they were complaining that all the people from LA were buying. I know. Up all the property. That's because yeah. Greg That's and I want to get a place there. I mean, hey, twenty five thousand dollars for five acres. Tell those what? lazy motherfuckers to save their bread <laughs> so they can <laughs> buy those acres out there. It's been for sale forever. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's go into a recap. Me. So. <laughs> The soul-crushing mundaneity of his daily grind at software company Inatech has computer engineer Peter convinced to see an occupational hypno- hypnotherapist. <laughs> the, hypnotherapist but the hypnotherapist puts him in a state of complete relaxation and dies before he can snap him out of it. Peter does 
Peter now does not give a single fuck, even skipping weekend work because he didn't feel like it. Peter fearlessly asks out his dream girl Joanna, dismisses his boss's requests, and charms the consultants in charge of downsizing the company with his don't care attitude. The consultants promote Peter, but fire his friends Michael and Samir, so the three of them team up to rip off the company with a virus that steals fractions of a cent with every bank transaction. Joanna quits her shitty job, and the boys panic when Michael's virus works too well. They have over $300,000 in one business day, so they consider laundering the money, but Peter ultimately decides to return the money and confess by leaving it in an envelope under his boss's Milton, an employee that has been abused left and right, burns the building down and takes the money. So Peter, Michael, and Samir are off scot-free. Peter takes a more rewarding construction job, while Milton enjoys his new fortune at a resort, but still gets no respect. End of movie. It's so good. Yeah. Good flick. All right. Want to give a shout out to our sponsors over at Mubi. Mubi. We love Mubi. We do. So Mubi is a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. Every day, Mubi premieres a new film. It's either a timeless classic, a cult favorite, or an acclaimed masterpiece. It's a movie that I guarantee will be interesting and will definitely compel you to have some conversations about it. And there are always 30 different films to discover. Every day, a film disappears, but another one is added. So today, I wish Ryan was here because uh, one of the films that they just uploaded is Sightseers, which I know oh, for cool. a fact. Oh, have you seen it? No, no, no. I've heard about it. I've heard it's from you. It's a British film director, directed by Ben Wheatley, who also made a movie called Kill List. And I know that Ryan saw this movie at Fantastic Fest, which is a film festival that we talked about in our last podcast episode. And it was his favorite movie of the year that year. And I've seen the movie, and it's a dark comedy about this couple that kind of ends up becoming serial killers. And it's really funny, and it's really dark. So if you guys haven't seen Sightseers, definitely check it out at movie.com slash wisecrack. They're giving 30 free days. If you go to mubi.com slash wisecrack, it's a whole month, 30 movies to watch for free. So tell them we sent you. And as always, we'll see you at the movies. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, these guys are great. Yeah, they are awesome. I, I, as you're saying the recap, I have so many quotes. There's so many good ones. Like, I must have put a decimal in the wrong place. I'm always doing that. It's like some mundane detail. This isn't a mundane detail, Michael. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. You know, one of the things that you mentioned, I mean, first of all, I just want to talk about some of the uh, – the ways that the movie criticizes corporate culture. I mean, one of the things that I was struck with is just how the set, the design is so good. I know yeah. this movie was made on a low budget, mm. but it still works so well. Like the white sterility mm -hmm. of Peter's cube is just so soul crushing. It's sad. So yeah. sad. There's no decoration. There's no decoration in his apartment. Just everything about his drab. life is just drab. Yeah. I, I, I imagine, honestly, you can connect, connect it a lot to the Amazon fulfillment, like the episode we saw in South Park, but like that whole soul crushing, like you work and you go home and like the whole of it is just sort of nothing. a sad, there's nothingness. Yeah. Your whole life is pretty empty and you're yep. just really working for this yeah. soulless job that you're so disconnected from. Filling yeah. time. Very, no agency. Every day is worse than the last. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is life. Yeah, definitely. Um, go ahead. Sorry, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I was going to go through some of the ways that it criticizes corporate culture. Like one detail that I didn't remember is that Lumberg drives a Porsche. Yeah. Everyone else has uh, like a generic Honda or right, something right. like that. Um, uh, I love Milton some- takes the bus. Milton takes the bus. I love this talk about motivation. So oh, yeah. that's this is my one of my favorite parts about the movie on this rewatch. But go ahead. Okay, so I'll go ahead and read it. He says, "Now I work my ass off, and Inatech ships a few extra units. I don't see another dime. So where's the motivation? And here's something else, Bob. I have eight different bosses right now. So that means when I make eight? a mistake, eight. I have eight different people coming to tell me about it. That's my only real motivation is not to be hassled. That and the fear of losing my job. I love it. He's like, eight, eight. Eight, yeah. <laughs> so what were you going to say, Alec? Well, I. it's interesting. I think this movie is almost, well, is or will be a cultural artifact of office culture. I don't think office culture is as much like this. I'm sure there still are offices like this, but uh, we've talked about this in one of our videos, uh, but there's these authors, Boltonsky and Cipello, who talk about, it's like in the 60s, 70s, 80s, there's this real crisis of motivating your workers. Uh, and if anything, 
it's kind of it, it's exactly what uh, Peter is saying that, you know, I don't get shit. So managers had to freak out and figure out how to motivate them. And I feel like now what we see more often in companies is the sort of tchotchke style of motivation. It's not mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you need to do your job and do this TPS report, right? It's like, oh, I know the minimum is 15, but like, isn't this your true passion to wait tables to some shitty customers? Yeah. Or or like the, I, the tchotchkes are maybe are different in that, you know, there's the there's tons of perks and there's great snacks and there's bean bags and all of these things. Look how fun it is here. You're not going to find a better place to just hang out. You love work. Yeah, I I wonder how much of the development of Silicon Valley corporate culture, which is what we're talking about of how oh, we have a whole buffet here or we have beanbag chairs and you're not here to work, you're here to have fun and mm. also work. Mm. I wonder how much that is actually basically a reaction to this movie yeah. i mean everybody everyone in san francisco everyone in these companies they've all seen this movie they all know that it's soul crushing they all right. get the message of this movie and i feel like and I've this come to movie... a place where bean bags and snack bars and all that stuff i mean not to say i'm too, totally super jaded but i look at it for what it is yeah. you know they're trying to keep you at course, work all day long keep you happy and, and you know and it's i just look at it as sort of as repressive and sad or oppressive and sad you know as as what this version worth, of it was in the it's 90s. It's worth noting that Wisecrack has free snacks. <laughs> no, well, not anymore. Uh, we, we've yeah, cut that, on we've cut that back. Yeah, we're going retro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I will tell you, you said, I don't know if these offices exist. I had to go to our accountant's office last week, mm. and we used to shoot thug notes there. Remember that yeah, accountant's oh, okay. office yeah, back yeah, yeah, on the yeah. west side? And, like, that place is office space. I mean, like, uh, yeah. totally. not that it's oppressive, but it's like, it's like you know, uh, what is it's it? Like, everyone's got a suit, tie. Suit and tie. I mean, they're very nice people, really. yeah. But it's just like, yeah, hi. And you can hear like the air conditioner, like, like the rattle. I mean, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It is like. Some people, some people actually love that. No, I get it. Librarians like, and stuff. Thrive too. for it. They but can't you can hear yourself there. dying. Oh, yeah, totally. You can see it in the pictures. Just look at the pictures around your office. <laughs> It, but there's also and all cubicles sort of, and yeah. Ooh. Go ahead. It's interesting. You you see the movement because you know Mike Judge also works on Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of yeah. culture, yeah. like the accountant's office, and then Silicon Valley is all about like, oh, you're not repressed. Like you're not Peter or or Samir. You're free. You know, we have an open office and we have snacks and we have a ping pong table. And Silicon right. Valley is all about mocking that a new sort generation of, of it. I think that's great. Yeah, but. But it's almost it's weird. There's like a pushback where I especially open offices in particular, mm -hmm. people are like, just give me a fucking cubicle. I can't fucking focus because there's eight million people trying to talk to me and I just want to be by myself. Right. I think people there's going to it's like a ping pong and going back and forth of like it wants to be like a social environment. It's going to feel like a big city. We're going to have these really great collisions while we walk into each other in the middle of the of the de of the of the floor. And now it's like, no, please leave me alone. I need to focus and concentrate. <laughs> Let me be by myself. And I want it to be silent. And uh, yeah, no, and, and you feel it like even at the YouTube space or something. Like it's very fun and it's engineered to be fun. It's mandatory engineered. Mandatory fun. fun. <laughs> yeah, and it's just sort of like uh, yeah, it's 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 a, you know, oppressive in its own weird way. But I. I, well, but, that's why work. Some work can be kind of as long as you find contentment in it. You know the way Peter does ultimately at the end, or the same thing Goodwill Hunting. Like you just sort of find a love of the thing that you're doing. You can yeah. kind of be liberated a bit. But yeah, the environment and man, corporate environments are just oppressive. They just suck. Well, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they have meetings to figure out the way to make as much money off of them as possible. Right. I think they could make a movie like Office Space, uh, but call it like App Job. Right oh, now, yeah. you know what oh, I mean, like, like, like in, all in the, the tech world, like, exactly with all the guys that are doing the app jobs for the tech companies. You know, like the Lyft drivers, oh, the Postmates. Drivers. Liza oh. Koshy has a show like that oh, called really? Liza on Demand, where she's just sort of like every day she's doing Task Rabbit, or she's doing <laughs> Postmates, or really? she's doing yeah. It's a good show actually. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube Red. Not that I'm okay. promoting them at all. Okay. Screw them. But yeah, <laughs> but they, but they, yeah, <laughs> but they. No, it's a, it's a pretty good show. She did a really good job. But yeah, yeah it's all about that, like living this world of like freelance app, app yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're sort of day to day, and then all and the shitty you're people free, you're dealing with. But you're not free. At no, all. no. You're really like the slave of. The and you're a slave of the rating systems, which yeah. is the software company I used to work for was in ratings. Yeah. But you're a slave to like, please give me five here. stars. Oh yeah, does he complain Lift about driver? this a lot? Yeah, it's funny. Brad does like really I... shitty shit on when he's driving, but his rating is always good. <laughs> 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 he tells me the stuff I, he does. I... I'm like, wow. <laughs> what he gets away with? I, because I know about how shitty the rating system is. I was literally in Uber where. He just blew through an intersection and almost got in an accident, <laughs> and it was like, I was like. Well, I don't want to make him lose his job, so I guess I just won't leave a review. Or I had a driver that felt that was falling asleep at the wheel at 4 a.m. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> shit. 
four yeah. stars. If you wow. don't have a good review yeah. to give, don't leave a review at all. Yeah, <laughs> I give everybody I, five. But a part of me is like, I don't want this person to lose their job. I mean, it, everyone has their off days. Like, who am I to <laughs> to, to judge? But I, also, I'm like, but I don't uh, want someone to die in your car. So I really like, don't know what to do. They're so scared. They pull up and he's like, "Hey, I'm sorry, I was late." I was like, "Die, <laughs> it's all right, man. <laughs> it's okay." Please, I'm gonna give yeah. you five this is, stars. And it's like Black Mirror. Yeah. Uh, so. Alec brought up Baltansky and Chappello, and I was like, oh, he's either going to bring up this or this other thing. And so luckily I came prepared for the other thing, and I think that oh, you can yeah. probably guess what it is. Why don't you no. guess before I just go for it? The other thing, is it Bartleby? It's close. No. Uh, well, kind of, yeah. It, it basically is. It's Zizek and yeah. the postmodern boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so Zizek... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Greg and I are like, uh, well, you, this is like Alec yeah. and Alec and I, since we spend most of our days just brainstorming about videos, we kind of are a little bit too close to each other's brains. <laughs> right. sometimes. I talked to Jared Barnum and yeah. Bailey. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, how about that? The stars born. <laughs> <laughs> so Zizek talks about this thing called the postmodern boss. So whereas a regular boss will just tell you to tell you what to do. Like, Hey, fuck face. Here's clock your- in at nine. You're doing this. If you like it or not. The postmodern boss he tries to be your friend. He's like overly <laughs> polite and chummy and tells you what to do, but veils it in appeals to friendship or a larger company mission. That's me, unfortunately. So, I'm so for, sorry, yeah, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm gonna get offended here. So for, well, so here's the thing. It's, Jacob's it, different. Jacob. Well, hold on, go. On. Well, the, the, where it gets, I am Lumberg. Where it gets troublesome is so. For example, if you say instead of be here Saturday, it's. You don't have to come in Saturday, but your participation would really show that you've bought into the company culture and the company's mission. And this is, at least according to him, more – this is more oppressive because it not only yeah. asks you to do the work but to love the work. And that's so much more yes. dangerous Yeah, because it's asking you to essentially brainwash yourself for the purpose of the company. And so Lumberg isn't quite the postmodern boss, but he does represent a bit of this transition in that direct in which the with like the, yeah, if you yeah. could just do that or hey Peter, what's up? You know, like the, what's that kind of happening. But that's yeah. exactly who the the Chachkis um, guy is a hundred percent. Yeah. So I, I it's, yeah. So the flare? let me just let me just read the quote. So the Chachkis guy, this is the postmodern boss to a T. He says. Look, we want you to express yourself, okay? Now, if you feel that the bare minimum is enough, then okay. But some people choose to wear more, and we encourage that, okay? You do want to express yourself, don't you? Yeah, okay, great. That's all I ask. And that's Mike Judge, by the way, is the boss. Oh, really? Okay. I I, I mean, that guy's work has... You know, been through my life so much, God, but I don't really know what he looks and, like. Yeah, oh, yeah, him. I was a huge view of some butthead. He's fan. amazing. His oeuvre is incredible. Yeah. But- I, I really love this theory. Zizek doesn't use these terms, but in my mind, it's the Jewish grandmother theory of power, which is exactly what my grandmother is like. Yeah. Uh, as an old Jewish woman, it's not like you know, Alec, come visit me on Saturday. It's like, oh, your grandmother's so lonely. Don't you want to visit her? Wouldn't yeah. that make you feel so good? I, or she'll I'm just like, like oh. wait, but I got to go to Six Flags. Six Flags, huh? Fun? Well, it sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, just leave me here <laughs> to that, weep alone in the dark. That guilt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. guilt is Yeah, the that's worst. way worse. Oh, star is terrible. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of my favorite parts of the movie is the workplace accident that was the character's name? I don't remember what its name gets yeah. in. Tom. Yeah, Tom, 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 and he says it's not a workplace accident. He gets hit by a car. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, that, yeah, I was wondering how does he get that huge settlement then? Oh, from from uh, the, whoever hit he him. He backs out into the street and someone t-bones him. Yeah. Okay, that's right. So <laughs> he's at the party and he's all fucked up in a wheelchair and he says just remember if you hang in there long enough good things can happen in this world i mean <laughs> look at me, at me. <laughs> and and this along with the pet rock thing i feel like that his whole character is just the super cynical ways that you can escape the system cuz this movie was made remember in the 90s in 1994 when that woman at McDonald's spilled that hot coffee yeah, yeah, on yeah, her she, got paid. she got paid paid she got paid and so I feel like in the 90s, there was all... This made me remember that... It was Liberation mo- through, uh, through litigation or something? Exactly. Like get People out. would always just jokingly say, like, oh, man, you know, I'll just get hit by a truck, sue, and then I'll be good the rest of my life. You know, it's like, maybe, <laughs> hey, please Slip. do... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> please do those in front of traffic. 
I always say, like, please don't get on the ladder here. We have really shitty insurance. <laughs> That's like my go-to line. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he does a similar kind of cynical thing with the pet rock. I, I love this. Uh, let me find it. He says, you know, there are people in this world that don't have to put up with all this shit. Like that guy that invented the pet rock. You see, that's what you have to do. You have to use your mind <laughs> and come up with a really great idea like that. And you can make millions, never have to work again. Uh, and then I think it's uh, Michael Bolton is like, you think the pet rock was really a great idea? And he goes, sure it was. The guy made a million dollars. <laughs> the guy made a million dollars. Yeah, exactly. I know so many people like that. They're just like, my success in life needs to be by making money via the most bullshit way. And I respect it. <laughs> My, yeah, my thinking has evolved a lot, but I think it's just like a luxury where you just sort of, I don't know, I think the title turn, like maybe one day I'll be like, it's all about the money, who gives a <laughs> shit what it is. And I, I think I did really come from that pedigree. Yeah. And, or I think I admired it. I don't think I actually had it in me to do, to, to make shitty shit and try to make tons of money. But I know people who can, and I admired it for a long time. And now I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Oh. I'm sure it'll swing right back. Jared, can you just make more shitty shit so we can make more shitty money? <laughs> yeah, that's what Jared yeah. and I just can't do it. Uh, that's yeah. why we're bad at YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> like, we read too many books to make our videos. <laughs> right. The streets are paved with it in this city, man. Yes. So oh, many people yeah. make well, You read a whole book about like basically fucking people over with bad ideas, wasn't that? Like, I couldn't. Uh, there was a, there's a book about... Basically, the way that the uh, online blogosphere came to be and how it was all just paved with cynical growth techniques that basically like threw, it threw truth to the wind. It was just using media to manipulate the truth just to literally get more and more clicks. And I had to stop reading it because the parallels between it and YouTube were so clear and it was just making me very sad. Oh, nah, yeah. So I, I had to stop. I, I like feel the like the modern version of the pet rock <laughs> is, is the guy who has like a fake news site where he's... <laughs> I don't know why. I, don't know. I want to hear why he's laughing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Greg is just realizing. Oh, man. No, I just love that. I just love to see your face too. It was like, oh, it's too close to what we're uh, doing. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is Jared's yeah. life every day, man. Oh, man. It's, it's 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 hard shit out there. No, I hear. You. Were you gonna say, Alec? I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say, I think the modern incarnation of this is the guy who owns a fake news site, two fake news sites. One's liberal, one's like re Republican, and it's just the same stories but flipped for like depending on what the outrage needs to be. Oh yeah. And that that person oh. is just making so much fucking money. I knew one of those. Yeah. You knew one of those. I did. I'm not going to oh, mention wait, his I name. I know this person yeah, yeah. Too. <laughs> but yeah, I knew someone again, just unscrupulous, right? Like, okay, if people want, they, they would actually write the same exact story in both ways. I don't know if we're getting off topic, but they write the same story for a you know a conservative slant, for a liberal slant. Put them both up; they both do vi they both do great. And then it's again, there's no actual backbone. Are we are we dumb for having these morals? It's <laughs> a good <laughs> question. No, that's a good question. Like, you know. I look at the like, look, they they. <laughs> <laughs> they start to skim off the top. They start to win in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, my God, what do we do? We should be criminals. Let's launder the money. We don't even know how to do but that. only yeah. because they fucked up. They fucked up, yeah. yes. If but they if hadn't they hadn't fucked, fucked up. I guess they would be sitting fat and happy over time. Right. But I don't know. I think eventually it, it catches up to them. I think part of this is there is like a morality to like, yeah. I think Peter is liberated because he did do the right thing. He yeah. felt good about at least, you know what, Sweet I can clear my conscience. I put the money under the table or under the under the, 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 the door. When it went down, I don't think he's sitting there saying, oh, God, I could have kept that. What was I thinking? He's like, he's free. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's something about the moral, the moral stance like it's sitting on you and you, your conscience is cleared. When you feel like you've done the right thing, you've liberated yourself, and now you can go do whatever the hell you want to do. Even with the analogy to the, like... He's not tied to the money, ultimately. The stuff... I'm talking about us now. Like, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> our, our, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That, I, yeah. I, I no, hear No, it's a good question. Here, here's the thing for me. I think it's I, like... No, I, I, I'm sorry. You see the way I did no. I'm talking about that. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. I get it. No, no, what's that? I mean... For, for me, it's that... You, even if you race to the bottom in whatever yeah. industry you're doing, there's no guarantee... That you're gonna win That's and right. for me to race to the bottom and to give up all your morals yeah. and still lose is the worst fate. Yeah, it's the yeah. worst outcome. That's and, very and, true. And so that's what I. Like I Kelly that's, McFarlane. That's that's what I couldn't. <laughs> I feel live very with. similarly. I respect that. Yeah, I respect. That. But I do a lot of soul searching myself to see like what kind of scumbag am I, and I realize <laughs> that I'm a really bad one because I'm like I'm like these guys like to conceal the source of money as by channeling it through an intermediary. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> no, like I'm not. I just I'm not a good criminal man. Yeah. 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 It's just not what I I don't know. I just couldn't. How about you, man? 
Well, not criminal. I mean, I'm looking at like you know, um, like soulless art. You you see like mm-hmm. people doing like the shittiest. In in my business, we call it just hack. Like to- Thomas Kincaid kind of guy. You remember that guy who used to paint landscapes, made cabillions of dollars, and it who, was like who, who's a big hack successful stand up oh, that you would Jeff Dunham. Dan Cook. Oh, okay. I mean, well. I I go back and forth with Dane because Dane was like the first smart dude that did it the internet way, but but Jeff Dunham is the hugest. I don't know who that is. What does he's, mean? The, yeah. he's the puppet dude. He's oh, the dude that did the puppet, oh, oh, yeah. okay. the racist ass puppets. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> every little kid and mom across this country knows who he is, uh, but he's a huge hack. And um, hacking that he's just not a talent. What about Carlos Mencia? Just, remember that whole thing? At least he stole. <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean, better. I mean, that's that is that's that better, but. At least you stole material from funny people. This guy's just up here. Just, just not doing, funny? I'm an Arab. You know what I mean? And I'm a, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, it's just like, yeah. It's, it's just, cheap. Like, it it's just very, yeah, it's the bottom of the barrel. Uh, yeah, you're shooting crabs in a. But again, like, imagine you do that work and then, and you're, and you don't make it. Yeah. Then you're really right. like, you're stuck with, you, you you're probably horrible. hate yourself. No, nah, you're right. And there's no, also a right. difference between what, what you're describing is creating media that is literally just make you know we have a problem in this country where there's too much of a culture divide yeah and to be making feeding into money that feeding into it yeah i that's different than the pet rock the pet rock is just a dumb idea that some people like happen to find weight. gratification like the shake weight it's funny shake enough it's that not it hurting money. anybody right right it, it's maybe dumb but but then again the pet rock and the shake weight that's like you won the lottery yeah and shake I, weight and, I, and I, that and made I, a lot of money, right? I, mean, I think it did. I think it's all on, on a joke. You know what I mean? But it, it worked. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Or a, a lot of these, like, as seen on TV things, like the bacon bowl or whatever, like, yeah. I have no issue with that. Like, fuck it. If that's your passion yeah. or you're an inventor <laughs> and you got into CVS and you're selling that stuff, like, I don't care if you made millions of dollars. Or the woman who made Spanx, a billionaire. Oh, a, is billionaire. She a billionaire. Is she a billionaire. billionaire. Self made billionaire. Is Spanx? Spanx is like a compression <laughs> stocking for your body. Like you can like men and women use it too. Oh yeah, no, they Spanx for men. Yeah, so totally it's like this woman totally. just said like spandex. It's like spandex, but you it's like a girdle, like yeah, a, like girdle. A, like a, uh, it holds your body in. It holds your, your shit in. Yeah, yeah. It sucks your shit <laughs> in. But anyway, so she was like she used to like cut her own stockings and put it around her waist, invented this product, and obviously enough people wanted it. She made billions of dollars. I'm not saying like okay, maybe it feeds into body image issues. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of a lot of problems you can bring up about it. I don't care. She's still making that yeah. money. I don't think she's. <laughs> there's I mean, a lot. There's the a lot. Might be good. I mean, yeah. who cares? Someone yeah. feels more confident. She made a billion dollars. I mean, I'd love to have some of that. <laughs> yeah, let me get some of that space money, yeah. girl. But but great. Yeah. I mean, I, you know. Yeah. There's like some the yo, are, Remember the Yo app? Yes. The Yo the, app. Wait, there's no, no. A, I'm thinking of Yo Sushi. No, what's Yo app? The Yo app was just an app that you. Pre- they, they made fun of it on Silicon Valley. They turned it into the oh, Bro app. Oh, you push a button. Is a per- All you do, it's one button to say yo to your friends, and it got like a jillions of users. And he and this 17 year old kid who created it sold it for like 10 billion. Or oh, Flappy Bird yeah. or Flappy Bird or something. Yeah, and to me, that's like that kid's just lucky, but it's the people who. Yeah, try to it's spread explo- fake news and or exploiting people's and, like and, emotions and, and, and shit. And sometimes that line gets a little bit blurry because I think that especially with social media, people are vulnerable. You know, people go on Instagram or yeah. Facebook and they're not in the best mental state. They're yeah. feeling sad, sad or sad lonely or whatever. Or lonely. And yeah. I think there are a lot of businesses that are able to optimize the ad stuff to yeah. take advantage of that. Totally. And so yeah. yeah. It's that manipulation that's like that's the tough one. We're gonna ba- hat- a bacon bowl, like, all right. I mean, maybe it's unhealthy. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. again, you can find a problem with anything, yeah. but yeah. I, it's. I think it's the exploitation. It's like, are you really feeding into someone's whatever yeah. their their weaknesses in order to to make money? Mm-hmm. And in this case, feeding with feeding into their psychology or whatever, like with fake news. I don't know. But good discussion. Again, I like that. That's interesting. Good but anyway, discussion. is it? What, I'm, I'm curious, have, Greg. Have you ever had that crossroads where it's like, man, should I just do this hack shit? Oh yeah. Yeah, I see stuff all the time that other comics are doing, and I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, God. And then they get they blow up off of it. Shit. Yeah, I've seen a guy, like, really... I've seen a guy move to L.A., and the first time I saw him, I was like, oh, wow. Have, you ever, I, I, have you ever dipped your toe into that nah, kind of hacky man, territory? I can't, no. I can't, I can't do that. Because i got to look at myself in the face, and then i got to look at other people that know me. Um but yeah, this guy moved here. I saw his set, and I went home, and I was like, "Babe, this dude, woo, cooning it up." Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I was really? Like, and, now, and then he blew up. He blew up. Oh man, <laughs> do I? Is he? Well, that's I, what I'm I, saying. I know, I, know, I know you're not gonna say his I'm name, but, but is he big enough that I would know him? Uh yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you've I'll, seen I'll, I'll right there. there. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Stop there. But it's just, but it's that kind of you probably see that after making that kind of moral judgment, and then you're like, what yeah. am I doing wrong? Is it is, is my morality the problem here? Because yeah. like nice guys yeah. finish last kind of mentality, yes. and that's like gets it eats at you. It does eat. It, I mean, because you see the guy making money, but then you talk to other people, and they see the same thing, and they're like, oh yeah, man. I, ugh. That helps. Those eyes got real big. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, do, you think, uh, do you think he cares, though, or he's just too busy getting paid, doesn't I care about it? Yeah, I don't think he cares. Uh, Maybe yeah. part of it's down there, but who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's funny, though. It's a good conversation piece. Yeah. Yeah. So next thing I want to talk about is something we've talked about before we even talked about it a bit on our Fire Festival podcast is this uh, thing that we see a lot is a juxtaposition between rap and white-collar hustling. Mm. So, Ooh, uh, yeah. yeah, this, I love this movie's got door. Scarface <laughs> and the Ghetto Boys. Was this which the is... first one? Oh, oh, go ahead. Keep going, though. I mean, Oh, this... no. I just wanted to shout out to Houston Rap and, <laughs> and uh, Mike Judge doing the was Houston thing. Was this the thing. first one, though? Because, I mean, like Silicon Valley. Yeah, I wonder. Silicon Valley eats it up. They yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but was this the first one I actually did I that? I think it might went be. went hard on it? Because... Yeah, I think people always reference "Damn, it feels good, good to, to be a gangster." gangster. Yeah, yeah. Movie. yeah, yeah. I think you might be right. You know, I don't feel as like I look at Silicon Valley sometimes, and I'm like, man, y'all really don't have a lot of brothers on this show. And it's, <laughs> y'all do y'all are hardcore with the hood gangster music, but with um with Office Space, I don't, I don't, I didn't feel it as much with Office Space. I felt like they were just doing it, not as. I don't. I don't get the same feeling as I get. I think with that them. awkwardness, it plays into them, it, right. Yeah, yeah. kind of plays into it. The fact that he's not tough. Well, especially Michael Bolton oh, at the totally. beginning scene. He's Yo. like trying to be tough. He can sing along. He's great. Yeah. He's out of high school now. <laughs> yeah. He's out of college. He's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like really scared and he locks his door to like a what does the guy say? Like balloons or something? Oh, exactly. Yeah. The the, the black guy who's yeah. what uh, panhandling. He, not even pan. I think he's like selling something. Oh, he's selling Isn't something. He, like, it's like a very like friendly, harmless guy, and he's like. <laughs> Lock the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Michael Bolton's really scared little boy. I mean, he's like a completely terrified kid, basically, but he thinks he's all tough. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is it that he thinks he's tough or is that he gets something out of expressing that kind of anger that's in rap music? Or, I think we get or, that with the copy that, machine. Because you know, rap music's all about escaping a shitty situation, sometimes through illegal activities. I, I read, I read that as like Michael Bolton's just trying to be cool. Like he just he happens to know the lyrics. He happens to be able to sing along. But he's like by himself at his own commute. Like you think he's trying to show off to no, other no, no, people. No, no, no. But it's like, like it feels good and empowering, and it's kind of like I don't know. But when he saw his boy Peter, you know, after they did the whole thing with the girl, was like Michael Bolton. Is that your real name? He's like, yeah, that's my real name. And then, <laughs> and then Peter comes by, and he was like, yo, you know, like he does that whole thing. So. Oh yeah, and, and, and when we, when when people someone walks by, Michael Bolton's like, sup, G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he leads in. To it. Yeah. yeah, he's trying to be cool. Yeah, but it's funny. Uh, I didn't. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's funny in this movie. It's not it's as really much funny as well Silicon Valley. Yeah. I think I, it's still I, funny. I, I in think Silicon to Jared's Valley. point, the go ahead. The music is about like I am so deprived of agency or autonomy or whatever you want to call it, and this is a music that's about taking control of your life and like exerting your machismo or whatever. So it's like, yeah. I'm a fucking gangster, even though I'm like a little dipshit like programmer. Yeah, and Michael Bolton even says the reason I work at Inatech is because I'm a pussy. And, <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. and, and there's nothing less pussyish than rap music. So I, I totally yeah. get it. Yeah. <laughs> also, the diversity thing is kind of funny. You've got Samir, and yeah. like it's still like at a time when it's like. There's no respect, really. It's like Samir Naga, Naga, oh. not gonna work not here gonna anymore. Work and then also the, ju- the judge later on, he's like Samir na 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 but like, there's that like, the little bit of diversity that's kind of funny that they're playing with too. I mean, the whole because you end up in a working environment where you've got to be professional, and polite, and courteous. But there's still like oh, things I mean, like that. Like people are just not used to this. Like, yeah. how do you pronounce that name? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. What do you guys think about the conclusion about that he uh, manual labor as a kind of cure all for soul crushing office work? How, does that does it uh, does it feel gratifying? Is it a good resolution for you guys? I think so. Like I said, to me, it felt like like uh, like Goodwill Hunting. Like again, especially because he gives up that money, 
He's he's let go of this whole dream of I need to fuck people over to be happy. He finds the contentment in himself, and ultimately it's something very simple. I don't think it matters that it is construction, but it's something very simple where he just knows he goes to work, does his job, he feels good about it. There's no one really bossing him around. At least nobody don't see that. He just, he's just doing his thing. And of course, the fact that he's cleaning up the ashes of this shitty company is even better. Like he's crum- he's picking up those crumbling ashes. That's really satisfying to him. But I think that's the, to me. It's just it's cathartic in that it's very simple. Like he's found contentment in something very easy. It's not some fantasy or some scam. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think it it's very similar to some other stuff we've talked about. We we've talked about this idea of like pastoral serenity in mm-hmm, Farmville, mm-hmm. but just the idea of like modern life is hectic and crazy and stressful and your job sucks and whatever. So people often now have this idea that I'm just gonna fucking give it all up and live on a farm, work on a farm, you know, go to the woods, pull Ted Kaczynski. It, it manifests Tegrity. itself in a lot of different ways. <laughs> Integrity, yeah. <laughs> Simple pleasures. <laughs> Yeah, integrity. Uh, so, uh, and I think construction is just a version of that. And I think, I mean, this was even, um, you find it like there's a sort of, not a nature movement, but like Teddy Roosevelt, this whole idea that to have, like, the modern world is crazy enough that we need to, like, constantly go back to simpler nature, et cetera, to, to make sure we're kind of well balanced. I think it's just like another iteration of that. And uh, I think it was satisfying for me. And even to like, even I was in Death Valley the other week and I was like, you know, if Wisecrack goes out of business, maybe I'll just become a park ranger. Like, who gives a shit? Dude, like, I love it out I'll there. Talk to, I'll talk to I'll join you. a tourist about fucking scorpions and shit. And I'll, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you can clean toilets. <laughs> you might just go a month, months without a paycheck. But <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> we got yeah. nice rocks. Yeah. What about Milton? Like, the, at the end, he still gets no respect. Does he? Is, is there any real salvation for him? He still can't even get the guy to get his drink order right. Hey, he's chilling now, though. He you is know, chilling. He doesn't have to go in. You know. That's... I don't remember what was the end with, with Milton. What he's he like? Just... He's on the beach. He's at a resort. Oh right. But then he's like, he's like, I, the, I actually asked for no salt on the yeah. rim of this glass. <laughs> so he's still and, meek and he's still miserable. And, and the guy like doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Like, he, he's just <laughs> stupid, like he's like stupid lumber. gringo. I think is what he says. He's like stupid gringo. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, to just about in for a second, I want to give a big shout out to Rage Brew for the uh, donation. He oh, says, thanks. "Love your stuff, dude. Thug Notes is awesome, but all the wise crack is awesome. So thank Rock you, thank you, Rage Brew. Thank you, thank you, man." Yeah, I think he's getting a corona with the salt on the rim. Yeah, I don't remember. I think he just seems like he's eternally doomed. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> I love that actor, by the way. Milton. Who is that guy? He's Ron he... Lindo. Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, he's in he's a lot of stuff, He's the guy who wants the eyes and get out. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. The, I the want photographer. those eyes, man. And it's because his eyes are so fucked up in this movie. Yeah. It's a shared universe. He's also in all- <laughs> what else is he in? He's in some other See, movies, See, now that too. movie would get a million views. Yeah. He's in or the that, that movie. Yeah. He's the judge. Okay. He plays one of the judges. We've got, I mean, man, the whole movie is is excellent. For the boss thing, I think getting back to the boss thing, just like the, the, the oppressive boss that kind of masquerades as like you're going to be committed to the company culture. I worked in software for, for seven years. And and I worked in, during this wave of like the next revolu- the next evolution, which was kind of an early stage of what you're getting in Silicon Valley in this show, and it is so much part of um, and I don't I don't know how it's changing, but it's so much part of leadership in that world where everyone's bought into the greater vision, and there is this sense that everyone's got to be on the same page, and it's kind of like that campy behavior where where you're like, we're all in this together, and we're all going to go up and down together and that kind of thing. Whereas I felt, I lived in Europe for a while. You didn't get that a lot. There's a lot of cynicism about companies. I mean, a lot of it baked in. You'd love this, Alec. Like everyone, oh, you, the expectation across the board as an employee in Europe is like, the company is trying to fuck you. They're going to try to give you lots of reasons to like it, but you should be incredibly cynical. And I don't know how what's happening now. Like, I don't know what it's like at, say, Google or Facebook or Amazon or Apple or wherever. Like in terms of not not, well, not like the fulfillment jobs, but like in the corporate environment. I don't know how leadership well, is, is different. Europe is pa- will pass laws. I, I forget what exact countries this is in, but like it's now uh, illegal for employers to email you past five. So it's like right. the culture tries to creep in and be like. Yeah, your life is your work, and they're like, no, you can't, you can't send them any emails past five o'clock, right. which is great. Or, I, but I, I assume there's like a, a pressure from America, like even uh, places like Spain, where we have a siesta. I'm not 
I don't know. I, I'm interested if anyone lives in Spain to see if that sort of thing exists because they're dealing internationally with people who don't do that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, it makes it less competitive. Like as a, as an entrepreneur, it's less to get a workforce that's very restricted and very regulated, and you you know you just get less productivity typically. But um, it's a weird balance, like because yeah, you're well, const- well, you're like balancing this like what are the motivations and our whole millennial generation their primary concern is having a job that is fulfilling and so these companies are just kind of packaging that up for them and trying Mm. to sell them on that vision right and it's now the scary thing is is it becomes very cult-like where i've never worked at a google or anything like that but from what i would imagine it's very much like everyone's drinking the kool-aid and you don't question the kool-aid but i don't but i wonder if even that's like already passe in the sense that's already ha- like that's that was the the it's the, already gone yeah that was like a different generation of i mean and these generations are moving very quickly i think they're like within five to ten year little like like spurts but i think i wonder if that's more of like in the realm in the world of like facebook like like again which is already about 15 years ago or 20 years ago now um, 15 years ago, like, like like that whole like okay, we're we're getting we're connecting people together, and this is the buy-in, and we're all you know people are gonna be more connected than ever between families and friends, and and then you see the repercussions of that, and maybe that just happens in every company, but I wonder if like that's like a different generation. I don't know what's happening right now, like the big startups like Magic Leap or Tesla or whatever. Like, how are those cultures different? I have no clue. I, I don't work there I mean, anymore. Elon Musk is a guy who was sleeping on the factory line and was angry at employees for not, you know, not answering enough. emails at all hours of the day and stuff like that. But so, yeah, I, I mean, I've been in, in smaller, not exactly startup situations where <laughs> I, I just, I'm going to be him. very vague here, but I remember having a conversation with the boss. They made something very shitty and wanted us to get it out there to all the journalists, all the whatever. And yeah, you know, we were doing exactly what we were told, but he could kind of into it that we weren't doing it like it was our last dying wish to see this thing succeed and it was like how, how you know how can i motivate you how can i motivate you and everyone just was kind of quiet because we're like we're just doing it because you give us a paycheck like we all think yeah. it's kind of shitty why didn't you just say more money yeah because it doesn't work that way <laughs> i had this job where i was i'll out. do that for money <laughs> <laughs> i was a bartender and uh i had this german uh manager who was real cool cool dude i, I remember liked him this guy yeah, I Mar- the Martin. water guy he's a water guy real cool and uh we had like this every, like every once a month we'd have these concerts at the at the lacma at our restaurant at our bar and he was doing something he was like greg greg come on why you not hey, come on you can help me do this you know like and i was like you know martin if my W-2 said the same that your W-2 said, <laughs> I'd be a little bit more motivated to do this yeah. like you are. And then it was like, ah, you're, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You got it. See, good for you, man. Like, man you, exactly. make, you, you, make, you got a Porsche. You know, Yo, like, sh- shut the fuck yeah. up. You know, like, yeah. Absolutely. Good I'm out you. here at eight. Yeah, yeah. It was, I kept it. I mean, I was leaving in a couple of months. And I, didn't, I didn't care. I was like, Peter, yeah, like, Peter like, <laughs> can I give you a promotion, man? Like, like, you're. I, uh, I didn't give a fuck. And I think people respect that, too. I think absolutely. Respect the the honesty. Yeah. Just Not honest. rolling over. Like, eh, no, nah, man. You got it. I'm out of here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That yeah. confidence. Anything else you guys want to bring up about the movie before we go into the mailbag? <sighs> God, hmm. so good. good move. Software, <laughs> discount. I just, oh, I know something I want to bring <laughs> up. <Jennifer Anderson>. Yeah. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I had some nails. Did anyone, well, I don't think anyone had this thought. As I was watching this movie, I couldn't help but think that this movie is Django and Chain for white people. I'm just going to leave it there <laughs> and you react to that. <laughs> go on. Uh, yeah, I want to hear more. Right. <laughs> I'm not comparing slavery revenge <laughs> fantasy. <Yeah. laughs> I love that. Uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> no. I I but get it, it, but it's a, but it's a revenge fantasy about like the oppress the oppressive structure around you. Obviously, in Django, it's slavery and burning down the plantation. In this case, mm-hmm. it's your shitty boss and then ripping down the "is this good for the company" banner and then eventually burning down the office. They both end in, in things burning, is all I'm saying. <laughs> That's I, got a, I got a friend, uh, I'm not going to name his name, but Jacob, actually both Jacob and Alec know this guy, uh, and he is from a very, very wealthy family. He just never, never has to work a second in his life. And sometimes when I look at just the amount of freedom that he has, I do think like the difference between the amount of freedom that he has, the amount of freedom as I have. Now, I would never liken it to something between like a slave and a free man, but it is a large gap. Totally. Yeah. Uh, and 
it, and sometimes it makes it a little bit difficult to connect with, with, with him because it's almost like we're two different beings. Oh, he's like an alien to me almost. I, I, <laughs> he can't understand what my life's like. I can't understand what his life is like. And uh, You connect on human emotions. Those, those are almost identical. Yeah. You know? No, and we're so close. <laughs> like it's, not, it's not like we don't hang out. But like feelings but, of becoming and finding yourself and what you want to do with your life, like those things, those things yeah, are pretty but, universal. Yeah, but there are certain times where conversations get awkward between the two of us where it never gets awkward with other people. Yeah. So, for example, <laughs> he once asked me, are you ever want to make movies? You ever want to buy two planes at the same time? Or he ever says like, <laughs> he's like he, said, he said, do you have the desire to make movies anymore? And I said, he, and I said, I mean, only if some guy with a lot of money just get, gave it to me and let me do whatever <laughs> I wanted. And I immediately was like, oh. Does he read it? Does that... he think that I'm talking about him? I hope he doesn't think I'm hitting him up for money because I'm yeah. not. Yeah. This guy once told me that, and this is apparently something that rich people go through, which I did not know about. <laughs> but he once told me that he was in college and he was wrestling with a friend, just like playing, you know, like drunk, whatever, in college. And he accidentally broke the guy's arm. And the guy's parents, when he found out, they just knowing that my friend's parents were as wealthy as they are sued the family just because they knew that, that they, they could get the money that that, yeah. that they would just settle in a second and get tens of thousands of dollars for it my cousin can you yeah, imagine the the awkwardness between you and your roommate that yeah my parents sued your parents you know just because they knew they could get the money yeah. that, that actually that, that happened that happened. Yeah, that happened. That wow. happened. Yeah. How much money? <laughs> <laughs> forty thousand dollars. Yeah, forty G's. Forty wow. thousand dollars. Broken arm. I had a broken arm. Max Damn. went to a friend. I have my cousin Max went to a friend's house. They have very rich family from like the Palisades or something. They got on some uh, go, uh, golf carts. They had golf carts on their property at their house. They roll. They're fucking around their kids. They roll over. He broke his arm or his leg or something. His foot. He broke his ankle. And the parents immediately thinking, "Oh God, the first thing that's going to happen is this kid Max is going to sue us." They like disowned him as a friend. Like they allowed, they had to completely separate. They didn't, allow, and it was Max. My, my cousin never sued them. He didn't. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he he knew it was his own fucking fault that yeah. he did that. But just like that, that dynamics at play is just so sad. Yeah, but that money shit. Money is. More I mean, it's, money, I think of Richie Rich. That was a great problems. movie, by the way. I don't see that again. But like, yeah, it's like you just create these separations. You're like, man, I can't even interact with the real world anymore. It's like the Michael Jackson thing. Like you just can't even it's real. interact because you're so rich. We have like trust fund comedians, mm. uh, you know. Like everybody, most comics are just like you know. Oh, work it's like my word, all entertainment. Bro. Yeah, but you have these kids that are just like, uh, I just graduated from college and I get my parents just give me rent. They just pay for everything, and I'm just out there doing comedy, and they don't have to work. And and once you find out that a kid is like a trust fund comic, oh, you write them off. Oh, everybody's <laughs> just like everybody just disowns them. Everybody's like, fuck this kid, you know. And, but it. And that's kind of like a version of I wouldn't say racism, but it's like a what do you call it? It's discrimination, prejudice. right? Like Discrimin prejudice. Totally, totally. But okay, say if the if it's a trust fund comic and he's funny, it's like all right, at least you're working. Yeah, at I'm least thinking of like what's her name? Uh, but if you're not Seinfeld. funny, you can still outlast other people, and that's what sucks. Yeah. You can still outlast. And oh you yeah. Still, and it just shows that you don't. I've been out here for 10, 12 years, and you know, you notice that the people that are still here. Yeah. Are the ones that can they just, got that money? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they got that yeah. Money. yeah. But what Tell like them. like Dreyfus? Like what's her name? Julia Julia, Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Dreyfus. Yeah. Like you can admire her. She's already a billionaire, and she's still working. And she's but she's so good. Like yeah. she's so good. Yeah. Talent. Like you really admire that talent because she's just Cause she, doesn't she doesn't have, have to work, but she's no. just fucking good. Seinfeld. I think yeah. Nick Kroll is like that. I don't really have strong opinions of him, but like he is from a very rich family. Kroll, but, yeah. yeah, still, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's a wild boy. <laughs> I like Nick. And to be to be honest, I do think that if you are from a moneyed family and you're given some sort of an opportunity that other people don't, and you fail, you probably feel like a huge piece of shit. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. You, you know, if you're like uh, whatever Ivan Reitman's kid is, Jason Reitman. Oh yeah. And your movie sucks. You kind of look like a a real like piece of <laughs> shit. You know. Anyway. All right, guys, we're going to go into the mailbag, so uh, you can call us at 213-534-8807 or 21-ELF-GUT or ELF-HUT-07. So, <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, Jacob, you have a voicemail. Do you oh, you don't have to play my it? voicemail. Yeah. Oh, no, all it was is I, I listened to the Roma podcast. I loved Roma. Sad it didn't win Best Picture, but I have not seen Green Book, so I can't say if it's better or not. <laughs> but um, – in in Roma, you mentioned that in the podcast, you say that the that Roma was made by Netflix and financed by Netflix, and therefore it's made and intended to be watched on a television set. Not quite the truth. Right. The movie was financed, I think, by participant media and a few other folks, 
and it was made to be a theatrical release film. Netflix just bought the distribution rights after the movie was made. So the movie was always intended to be pretty cinematic. So really, all, my only point was the movie was kind of made to watch, be watched in the theater. It wasn't like it's yeah. meant to be watched on a small screen. I didn't know that. Now, Netflix did distribute it, and I guess it is meant to be watched at home too. But it's part of why I think Netflix put it into theaters, and they kind of they wanted it to maybe yeah. win Best Picture. But anyway, that's all I had to say. I regret not seeing it in a the theater, and I did not know that. I and it's still corrected. playing at the Vista, so you can still see it in theaters. And okay. Still playing at the Vista? Yeah. Goodness. It's so good. Oh, it's a great movie. I love it. But that's all I had to say about that. So you can skip my voicemail. <laughs> okay, we're going to skip Jacobs. We got one from Sean for uh, last week's Tetsuo the Iron Man podcast. Hey, what's up, like, Wisecrack? This is Sean. Um, I was just listening to the Tetsuo Iron Man podcast. And uh, you guys brought up Velvet Buzzsaw, and I also saw that film quite recently. And I was actually hammering it the whole film. Just the, its attempt at trying to be meta without actually being meta, it, I, I find it quite bizarre. But one interesting thing, and I, I hope you guys can understand this better than I can, it has this really weird motif with fire, where every time movie. the artist uh, Dead Soul reaches out to cause general shenanigans, the paintings will crack and start to burn, and even uh, that's reflected in, some, in most of the paintings, actually, that he does. There's, you know, big fire motif, and uh, the painting at the end with the blazing sun at the center of it uh, that we kind of pan into uh, till, till we fade out. It, it's just this really weird motif that I feel like I didn't understand or it wasn't addressed, or maybe it's just total crap. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks. Bye-bye. Greg, did you see this movie? Iron Man? No, uh, uh, Velvet Buzzsaw on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen it. Yeah, Sean, I, I hate to say I haven't seen the movie, but I'm going to try and watch it as soon as I can get back to you. Sorry about that. Next one's from Craig. Hey, Wisecrack. Calling about the show, Me the Meaning. Is that I Ryan? you guys have the ongoing segment with the Rick and Morty like podcast about the Rick and Morty porn names. I figured yeah. you could start a new segment yeah. for Show Me the Meaning, Woo! where callers chime in with their best Ryan to show me the meaning. So I'll get you started. Show me the meaning! This guy's like a Ryan oh, Marley. Hell yeah. Wow, that sounds just wow, like that's him. great. Fuck yeah. Yeah. All right, if you guys, anyone wants to send us a... <laughs> A voicemail with a badass show me the meaning. We will play it. Yes. So thank you, Craig, for starting something. So once again, two one three five three four eight eight zero seven. Let me let us hear those pipes, man. Give us a big <laughs> show, show me, the, me the meaning. Yeah, <laughs> Greg. Greg does a good one too. Yes, you do. If you can be, <laughs> if you can be Greg or Ryan, I want to hear like a Jim Carrey it. version. Show me the meaning. Show me the meaning. All right, we got uh, a couple more for Roma. I'm just gonna pick one randomly. Let's go with Victor. Hey there, Wise Cast crew. Victor from Mexico here. Hello, I would like nice. to start by saying how much I love Wisecrack. It helped Thank me you. to see beyond the movie and, in a way, follow the, the white rabbit into the hole <laughs> and dive into what the story is really saying. <clears throat> I was a patron for a while, can no longer afford it, but I want, to, good, brother. I want you to know that I love what you do and support you in any way I can. <clears throat> I'm you. a big fan of, your, of you all. And find really insightful and entertaining what you say about movies, series, and games. I love the videos you make and this podcast. <clears throat> I just called to comment about the movie Roma. And I am sorry for this, Jared, because you should have watched it in the movie theater. I should have. <laughs> because Rome uh, um, was not produced by Netflix. According to what I've read, the movie was produced by Esperanza Film. Oh, there we go. Which yeah. is for Ron's company. And participant media. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Netflix only has a distribution rights. My second comment is also uh, another thing that Jared said. Sorry. Wrong. <laughs> Sorry again. Wrong. <laughs> this family is definitely not middle class. They have two women working for, yeah. for them day and night, and also their house is quite large and located in a district mm -hmm. where the upper and middle class live. <clears throat> another indication is that they own three cars. Mm. And I'm sure that Galaxy car looks expensive, mm. and their New Year's celebration looks very fancy. Once again, thank you, Jared, Justin, Brian, and all the Wise Squad crew for doing what you love and sharing it with us. And please send my regards to Garrick's warm alive <laughs> and his eyebrows. My family enjoys his alien's view of the Yardling Cinema. Looking forward for the next podcast. Peace. That was great. Thanks, oh, Thank that you so much. Really That's nice. a lot of love. Awesome. Thank um, you. 
One of the reasons why I decided to say middle class is because one of the other Mexican films that I love so much is Ito Mama Tambien. And I guess oh, yeah. those people they, are think, just I think it's, like mega rich. Well, yeah, in that movie, uh, so this was supposed to be completely autobiographical, whereas Ito Mama Tambien was more inspired by his background. That one, he his dad, in Ito Mama Tambien, his dad is working for the president of Mexico. So that's like a completely different level of like aristocracy and sort of connections okay. and connected blood. Uh, this one is definitely his life, which I'd probably say is upper middle class because it's not like aristocracy where they have their own like, you know, they have their entire like uh, whatever block. compound or <laughs> yeah. block or whatever. Right. But it is definitely upper middle class. I mean, yeah. these guys are wealthy enough. His dad's a doctor. They've got all the cars, like he said. But I think this is really his childhood. And he is. So there was a question about like which kid is he supposed to be in the articles, in the, in, like, the interviews. He's the little kid, the kid who's sort of like saying uh, the kid who cries at the dinner table. When, yes, when, and, you, yes, and yeah. the kid is sort of like, I, I, like when I used to be dead, this and this and this happened, oh, which okay. is so interesting. By the way, I have a, an old friend of mine. Um, his daughter says that she like she was born and out of the womb when she first started talking. She was like, before, like when I was dead, I used to do this, this, and this. Like she has like these visions of a past life, which is so interesting. Beautiful. But like that kid is, yeah, he he's supposed to be Alfonso Cuarón, like this really sweet kid who's sort of like you know in love with this with this nanny and. Um, but that's his life. This is like his his life that he recreated. It's such a sweet movie. Like you it's t- you should tell your friend to write that stuff down about their kid. Yeah, it's interesting. They say that uh, there's like this. Tr- in order to be born a Buddha, you have to be born within your birth sac, or, or like it's like the the womb is not punctured or something. You heard of that? No. Like the placebo has not been punctured or something. So this this guy's daughter was born that way, like in the sack. Oh, and it they had came like, out. Oh, and they had, and like, they had to take her they had to out. Take it like pull it off of yeah. her face. And then anyway, so she had that when she was born, and then she says he has these visions of like back when I was dead or before yeah, I was or before I was your daughter, I did this. Yeah. And, she, and she talks about this stuff as if it's normal. And it's like when well, that was Joan of Arc. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So she's like the Buddha, man. She's like, oh. the, or she's the next uh, the next Dalai Lama. That's what, yeah. Dalai Lamas are born that way. Sorry, okay. that's what I meant. <clears throat> Speaking of Roma, we got a email from Lucy. Lucy says, hey, guys, it's been a while. Sorry for my radio silence. I've been convalescing from getting run over fri- run over by a bus. Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, damn. Parentheses, oh. welcome to the life of a U.S. soldier. I think that uh, I believe Lucy's from, uh, I don't want to get it wrong. She, jo- she joined the U.S. military trying to get citizenship. Um, oh. And I've only just managed to get through all of Nick Cage month. Woo! So uh, she wanted to tell us about a bit of a scandal going on in Mexico. She says there's a petition going on so that the actress who played Cleo should be banned from attending events as she's not a professional actress and merely scored a good role on luck alone. This is a real petition signed by multiple people in the film industry in Mexico and even internationally. It hinges on the idea that only those who can appreciate the hard work and the technique and the beauty of art. Um, Mm. There's a Brazilian book by the name of The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector, and she goes on to summarize the book. Uh, Basically, she says... Uh, Clarice Lispector made it as such that her main character had only one beautiful and happy moment in her life, and it's when she heard a particular song. When she listened, uh, she didn't understand it in the academic sense, but she understood the beauty of the song from the depth of the soul. In that one moment, she destroyed all assumptions that art must be studied in order to be appreciated, and even the most ignorant and miserable can see the beauty that it holds. So her conclusion is that Roma, like this story, showed that art does not need to be studied to be expressed, loved, or felt. I thought that it was exquisite and that it's only right that it should uh, cause some form of havoc in the closed, haughty circle of stuck-up filmmakers, actors, and critics. Yeah, I think fuck it. Like, who cares if you're – it sounds like some, like SAG-type propaganda. Like, totally. Like, acting unions would say mm-hmm. you can't be considered a real actress unless you've studied the craft and have said – It's, it's kind of like – It's bullshit. Like, yeah, I've, like I've, yeah, it's an identity thing. Like, I've come out as a gay man or I've come out as an actress and now because I've said those words, yep. now I can be considered and evaluated that way. It seems a bit odd. Yeah, somebody, but I can see it. I can see the snuffing. I can see that totally happening. It's just bougie people everywhere, man. <laughs> That's somebody, all it is. Uh, Haters somebody, everywhere. Like, if she did a remarkable job, she whether was she was great. a professional actress or not, sometimes a, a role doesn't call for... You, you know, like, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think he's a good actor, but it's not because he's diverse. It's not because he can... It's just because he has presence. It's because yeah. an Arnold, yeah. he doesn't have to have range to be a good actor. He just has to function well in the movie. And... That's what happens. They just hate, man. Some people are just good off the back, you know. Yeah. No training. They just yeah. come off the street. She was natural and, and ready. Natural. Yeah. Great. 
Uh, I felt nervous for her because I think a lot of, I mean, I was watching the Academy Awards last night and like the camera's on her for best actress. I knew she probably wouldn't win because, you know, she's because she's not a professional actress. And I think the Academy works that way. And I think it's a first time role and a lot of of the issues. But like all of Mexico, I heard, was like sort of watching with bated breath for this event. You know, all of Mexico and all of the the, the area of Roma is like waiting. And poor thing is sitting there in this award. I mean, there's Glenn Close next to her and she's like, the cameras are on her. Poor thing, you know? (laughs) I just felt like really bad for her as they were announcing. Oh, she must not be like I don't know thirty some maybe. Okay, I don't know. Good sure. for her. Though. Somebody, somebody in the some? Discord, uh, Fox Metro said, "When are you guys going to finally do Twin Peaks?" And it's because of this, because Twin Peaks is my favorite show of all time, and I appreciate it on a level that is not academic in a sense. Like I probably I've seen the whole thing like twice. I loved every second of it. I probably understand less than your average viewer because I just don't care. You're not trying it's to just interpret a it. Visceral washing yeah. over you, washing over me. And I don't want to ruin that, so I'm sorry, Fox Metro. But but he did <laughs> thank Citizen Kane, by the way, uh, yesterday. Alfonso Cuarón did. So you'd mentioned that it's got to be inspired by that. He said oh. there were movies that inspired me so greatly as a child and in my life, my career. And oh, he mentioned yeah. Citizen Kane. He didn't Citizen mention Kane, Fellini. Deep but, focus. Yeah. He did or did not mention Fellini. He did not mention Fellini okay. yesterday, last night. But he did say Citizen Kane. I was just thinking about the podcast. Like, yeah, it's inspired. And what other movies? I mean, he did E2 Mama Tabi in. Just so good. I'd love uh, to cover was, that movie on this. The, I just saw it again. His, that's Great his movie. best. And uh, I saw that in the theaters. Diego Luna was on the on the on the Oscars yesterday. I was like, man, that movie is so it's so good. Gil good. Garcia too. Yeah. yeah, so good. He made. Uh, but did he make the bear rape movie? Oh no, that Revenant, was in, that's Inyari too. Inyari too. Yeah, Inyari too. <laughs> Inyari too. Okay. Get the uh, accent right. Inyari too. Inyari, Inyari too. I haven't seen that. Uh, all right, so this last one is from Brandon. He said, I was listening to your Show Me the Meaning on Tetsuo the Iron Man. I kept thinking that there's something really fascinating about how we are scared and disturbed by things taking on their natural processes. Like you said, static is a TV's natural state, but it's irritating and creepy to us. Metal rusts and make high-pitched noises when it rubs up against other metal. This really bothers us. Looking at bodies decay is disturbing. We're grossed out by mold. Maybe there's something to talk about there. As an aside, I'm allergic to most popularly used metals. My skin breaks out in nasty rash if I wear things like metal necklaces, belt buckles, uh, etc. So I would definitely not make it as Tetsuo. Keep up the good work uh, from Brandon. Mm. It's funny. So I mentioned in the last podcast that I had learned about Tetsuo the Iron Man from an Asian horror film class. And I don't remember if it was in this unit or a different unit, but I believe we were talking about obscenity or something like that. And our teacher was just like, why is it? That if I have to take a shit, why can't I just do it in the corner right there? Why don't we all just shit in the corner? It's something that all of us do. <laughs> There's nothing more natural than taking a shit. Why don't we just do it? And uh, I don't remember if there was particularly an answer, but yeah. I thought it was very interesting. No, a lot of our modesty and our, yeah, these social norms. You are... got anything for that, Alec? Yeah, I'm curious about you, buddy. <laughs> Wizards, you know, they just shit and they make it disappear, man. <laughs> are you guys, are, you know, J.K. Rowling, she's updating her canon. Oh, the... Alec is referencing this thing where J.K. Rowling keeps on updating the canon of Harry Potter, and she just tweets out that apparently to be wizards... more politically correct or to be more. No, no, no. She, just, she literally just forgot. like does it compulsively. <laughs> yeah, go for it. So J.K. Rowling is constantly updating the canon of Harry Potter. People are like, "Well, what about this random history?" And she does it. So in one of her long ass screeds about God knows what, she's like. As a brief aside, she mentions that plumbing was introduced to Hogwarts, whatever year it was, 1890, 1900, whatever. And then people are like, huh, if plumbing was introduced that late, like, where'd they go to the bathroom? And instead of just ignoring it, because it's a fucking kid's book and who gives a shit, (laughs) she's like, well, I need to answer that. Before the introduction of mobile plumbing, wizards would just shit themselves and make it disappear. There you have it. They didn't make magical toilets that made shit disappear without pipes. They just shit themselves. That's the end of my tirade. Wow. See, this is what happens happening? when you have too, when you have too much, much money. money. Yeah. What else is she yeah. going to do? She's got to feel, you know, she's building the canon. She's building a religion effectively. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good wow. for JK. Yeah. No, good for her. Also yeah, a self-made Just get her off totally, Twitter. Right? She doesn't need to be on. I have not paid attention. I don't, I'm not yeah, on social. We don't have Twitter. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for listening. Once again, if you want to send us an email, movies at wisecrack.co and... We get some user-generated show me the meanings here. Some yeah, of those yells. Those. So give us a call at two one three five three. Wait, what is it? Two one three five three. I should two one elf gut. Oh, there seven. we go. Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> whatever that is, it should be in the description. Leave us a voicemail. Let us hear your show me the meaning. That's right. See if you can uh, be better than Tom Cruise. Show me the money! Woo! 
<laughs> All right, uh, where can we man. find you guys on social media, Greg? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Greg the Grouch, Instagram, Greg Comedy, and my website, gregcomedy.com. And check out Greg's podcast, Black Stage. Black Stage Podcast, uh, Black Stage Podcast on Instagram, Black Stage Pod on Twitter. Check it out. And Alec. You can find me on Twitter at Wisecrack Alec. Cool. Jacob and I, uh, we don't do social media because we're afraid of internet derangement syndrome. So you can just catch us on Wisecrack. <laughs> yeah, at Wisecrack or right here in this channel. Smart That's guy. right. All right, guys, signing off for now. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah. We'll catch you that the next would-